Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and what you see behind me is a kind of a representation of Beetlejuice. Because once again we're going to be talking about this unusual, mysterious star. Because it turns out that it's doing something else once again, and something nobody can explain, because it doesn't really make sense. With all of the recent observations, once again maybe suggesting that either the star is just really unusual, and there are a lot of physics here we don't understand, or maybe, fingers crossed, it goes supernova, creating a very spectacular view in the night skies, but very likely not affecting Earth that much. And so let's discuss exactly what's happening here, but first, a bit of a catch up. What exactly happened to Betelgeuse back in 2019? The star that you see right here, visible from one of the solar probes, because it's just ridiculously bright. It's one of the brightest stars in the night skies. But also one of the largest ones we've seen so far, and it used to be a record holder up until more recent discoveries. You can find out what star is currently the largest in one of the videos in the description. But interestingly, unlike our star, Betelgeuse is extremely young. It's only approximately 10 million years old, and it's actually expected to go supernova anywhere from a few thousand years to maybe a few hundred thousand, depending on who you ask and depending on what model the scientists are using. And so this object is definitely very close to its end times and is expected to be one of the first stars to go supernova near us. Although near is a bit relative. It's anywhere from 550 to 640 light years away from us, so it is kind of far away. And the reason the scientists are not certain about the distance is because it's kind of difficult to determine certain properties of the star, for example its overall size, which can then help us determine how far away the star is. One of the recent papers from I think a couple of years ago even suggested that the star might be a little bit closer to us, so just over 500 light years away. But despite the distance, it's still really bright. It's anywhere from 7000 to 14000 times brighter than the Sun and is in top 10 brightest stars in the entire night skies. It's also currently approximately 700 times larger than the Sun with the overall mass of 15 solar masses. But it's not as hot as the Sun, the temperatures here are much lower, possibly just a little bit more than 3000 Kelvin because the star has expanded so much. But intriguingly, even some of the older astronomers were aware of its unusual properties, specifically its ability to change brightness. The brightness change was even documented by Sir John Herschel, one of the more famous astronomers of the 19th century. Although that's not unusual, these are known as variable stars, and there are quite a lot of them out there. This is actually very common in a lot of larger stars. But intriguingly, if you look back in history, there are even discoveries about the description of the star from various Aboriginal Australians. Or even more recent descriptions by various Arab astronomers or Chinese astronomers that didn't just describe the star, they actually wrote everything down. Even Ptolemy described the star by using a very specific Greek word, the word Hippokyros. Totally mispronounced, leave your complaints below. But the point here is that this particular description applies to colors that are sort of orangey, not really red. Or basically pale yellow to light reddish and somewhat different from the color we see today, which implies that the red color we're observing from it in a lot of modern pictures is something that happened in the last 2000 years. In other words, the star is evolving pretty quickly, and it seems to have at least two different cycles, 400 day cycle and a cycle that's a little bit longer at 5 years, which is exactly what the scientists have been observing for the past 200 or so years. But in 2019, something suddenly started to happen. It dramatically decreased in brightness by approximately 60%, becoming a much dimmer star than anything we've ever seen. Here are the actual observations from this period, and you can see that January 2019 was much different from January 2020, but by March 2020 it returned back to normal. If you like graphs, here's what it kind of looks like on a graph. And so this unusual great dimming event remained a kind of a mystery up until relatively recently, and all of the additional observations suggested that for some reason Betelgeuse suddenly exploded expelling a huge amount of material that after cooling down covered the star, decreasing its overall brightness from our perspective. In other words, the star itself might have not really changed that much, but that dust cloud covered the star. There is actually a really intriguing explanation you can find in one of the videos in the description that even suggests it could have been a result of a planetary collision or essentially a planet being absorbed by the star, with this new phenomenon now referred to as a surface mass ejection. It's not super clear what caused it, but it's the best explanation we have so far. And intriguingly, the calculations suggested that the entire dust cloud here was probably several times more massive than our moon. Or essentially this ejection was approximately 1 trillion times more powerful than anything the sun can produce. So the obvious question was, how common is this and what exactly caused it? But the preliminary investigation suggested that it's unlikely the star was going to go supernova anytime soon. Or is it? 
Because just a few weeks ago, the scientists have now noticed something else. The opposite. Betelgeuse has now increased in brightness by approximately 42% and possibly as much as 50% from its average. And as you can see from this graph, from a wonderful person, Remy Mandau, whose tweet you can find in the description, it looks like this has been happening for the past few months. Which raises another question about the star. Why? What's happening? What's going on? It really seems to be doing stuff we've never seen anywhere, and it seems to be producing effects that we currently cannot explain. And even though technically we don't understand what happened back in 2019, we really don't understand what's happening now. And this unusual rebrightening cannot be explained by a dust cloud. And so whatever it's doing, it seems to be doing on the inside or at least on the surface of the star. And because of its increase in brightness, it's technically now the seventh brightest star. It's even brighter than Procyon or Rigel that used to be much brighter. But I guess more importantly, there is no theoretical explanation for what's happening on the surface or for what's actually causing this. I guess there's maybe one potential explanation. Maybe whatever happened back in 2019 is now sort of reshuffling the surface of the star, with the top layers that were disturbed back in 2020 now coming back to normal by essentially dimming and becoming brighter over time. Or basically it's reshuffling its surface. But that's just one speculation and there is really no evidence for anything just yet. Although maybe there is a way to confirm what's happening by using some of the telescopes we currently have. For example, the Hubble telescope, or even the balloon telescope known as Superbit, the video about which you can find in the description, might be able to resolve certain details on the surface, explaining what's actually happening here and why the star is changing brightness. For now though, new mystery, more unexplained observations, and I guess more importantly, a potential chance for, maybe, Betelgeuse to go supernova. Although in reality we're not actually going to know if it's going to go supernova until pretty much the last second. And that's because when stars do go supernova, they give us very little notice. A typical luminosity graph would look something like this. In about 30 minutes it would suddenly become quite bright, would then experience a sudden dimming for a few minutes, and then would continuously increase in brightness for a couple of weeks to possibly a month. This is something we've observed from various supernova. And also, various neutrino detectors that usually detect one or two neutrinos here and there will suddenly receive a burst of millions and millions of new neutrinos as they escape the star and as they start to interact with matter on planet Earth. But chances of this happening right now are pretty slim. It's still very unlikely that Betelgeuse will go supernova, and it's a lot more likely that this is just another mystery we don't understand in regards to red giants. And so if you'd like to find out more, make sure to subscribe because we'll come back and talk more about this, especially once we know more in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.